Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see all your bright, shining faces here in this room and on Zoom. Welcome, everybody, around the world. So great to have Reverend Steve and Janice playing and singing with us today. So we'll Let's... have some music you're familiar with and then some that a uh, few new things yeah, that we'll you probably you haven't heard in a mix. So if you want to stand, please, and come together. Peace. A peace community. for a lot of people probably it's a fun one we're going to sing it through and we're going to sing it through twice it has two verses and two choruses and then we're going to do rounds so you get to pick which one you want to sing on the last times around so we'll we'll go through it for you and you'll get the idea i'm sure Oh, 
second voice, one voice, one piece in our lifetime, one life at a time, one prayer, one dream, one piece in our lifetime, one life at a time, one voice, one choice, one life at a time, one prayer, one dream, one life at a time. We're going to do it all over again. One life, one love, one peace in our lifetime, one life at a time, one prayer. Good morning. Welcome to the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Steve Van Meter, your senior minister. Welcome. You made it. Oh, man. It's been a week. It's been a month. It's been a year. It's been a lifetime. Woo. Here we are. Right before a full moon, right? Feel the energy building. Something wonderful is happening. <laughs> Just keep telling yourself that. Something wonderful. This is wonderful. No, there is something wonderful happening, and you are it. You found yourself here. This is the place spiritually to be, and apparently physically to be, too, because you are here. I want to personally thank you for being here at the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living on a Sunday morning on Zoom. We know you have a lot of different places you could be, but you found yourself here. You somehow saw the sign and just decided to check it out, and we're uh, appreciative that you did. And some of you have actually come back, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. It, it says a lot to what we're doing here. But we're going to do what we do every Sunday, and that is read our vision mission statement, which says, we are an open, loving, spiritual community dedicated to evolving consciousness teaching spiritual principles. So I have a couple announcements I'd like to say before I invite Jamaica up. And one is that um, one of our uh, longtime members has made their transition, Ned Sokol, uh, Angie and Ned um, sit right back there. And we, we reserve a spot for them because they usually come in late because they drive from so far away. But uh, Ned made his transition over the weekend. And um, he, he, he's just a beloved member. He's been a long time member here. We just want everybody to know to keep uh, Ned and Angie and her family in prayer and knowing the very highest and best with and for them. Um, whenever we, you know, lose a family member, we know that they're going off to triple light fantastic without us. We feel a little jealous that we're, <laughs> that they're having a party without us, but we know that they are right where we are. And we are blessing them on their next adventure through the wilderness, as it were. 
But I also have an announcement, and this is not in your literature and not in, this has just been uh, announced that we are having a Halloween party. <laughs> and my band, The Full Moon Project, will be playing at that party. So it is on Friday night, October 25th from 6 to 10 p.m. The band will start at 7. And we're going to, you know, just play throughout the evening off and on. Um, and it's a costume party and a potluck. So bring your favorite Halloween fall dish. And it's a fundraiser for to help us pay off our roof. We still owe a little bit to the roofer. So we are we're looking at all sorts of ways at supplementing our income so that we can get our roof paid off, you know, I mean, uh, just in time, right? I mean, we are, we are on time. Now we just have to next year, we'll start tackling the LEC roof. But ah, that's. <laughs> but I want to thank everybody that has given to our roof fund and continues to give to our roof fund, which ensures generations to come of metaphysicians to have a roof over their head metaphysically and spiritually. So we thank you for that. And now I will invite Jamaica Wallace up, who is our board president and a practitioner here. And she has some other announcements for us. Thank you, Jamaica. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. All right. We have our annual meeting coming up on October the 6th, so make sure you mark your calendars. Um, and that is where we will be discussing the uh, business of the center, going over our budget for the year. And we also be, uh, will be holding our elections um, for trustees, election of trustees. So we do need to have a quorum, which is 25% of our members. So if you're a member, please be sure to mark your calendar and hang out with us on October the 6th at noon um, for that uh, wonderful Sunday. And we do have positions available for the board. So if it's something that you're feeling called into service, um, the Board of Trustees, we would love to welcome you. Um, there is a packet available on the back counter that gives more information about what is required um, and what is expected when you're on the board. And I also want to let everybody know that we are going to be having a board meeting this afternoon at noon over in the LEC. So if this is something that maybe you are feeling called to or you're just not sure and you'd like to come over and uh, hang out with us and listen in and see what's going on, we invite you to come on over. And if you have any questions, of course, I'm available or Reverend Steve or any of the other board members are available to talk with you about Upcoming events, we do have some other fundraisers for this roof coming up. Um, Saturday, September the 21st from 9 to 3, Joy at Joy and Terry's home located at 766 Northeast, Northeast 3rd Street. Northwest 3rd Street, sorry about that. I just got sick, sorry. Um, they're asking for donations of clean priced items, all the proceeds are going to the roof fund. You can drop the items off at Joy and Terry's home on the Thursday and Friday before the sale. And if you need help with picking them up, Kat has volunteered, oh, let me try to Kat, thank you, uh, to pick those up um, so you can speak with her. Um, they are asking that you price it before uh, they you drop it off. So and they're suggesting you use the 10% rule so if you bought a lamp for $20, then you would want to charge $2 for the lamp, if that feels right for you. Um, if you have any other questions, um, the information is available in the e-news, or you can also talk with Joy or Pat, and their phone numbers are listed also right here, you can talk to them. All right, we have self-mastery class going to be starting on Wednesday, September the 18th. This is facilitated by Janice Garbay and will be co-facilitated by Janet Murray. And it is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, all the information for that class is available on the back counter as well as the sign-up sheet and also in your e-news. E so you can ask Janice if you have any questions. 
Um, all of the books are available for those classes in the bookstore now as well, and you do get a 10% off um, discount for that. And then we will be having Chakra Balancing Meditation with the Laying of Stones on September the 22nd from 12.45 to 2. Uh, this is facilitated by Wendy Orsat, and this is also a fundraiser, so all of the proceeds for that will go to our group. Thank you, Wendy. And our metaphysical book study continues on Sunday mornings from 9 to 9.45, held over in the LEC. And we continue to study The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And directly after that book study group, our meditation group continues to meet um, at 9.50 and goes till 10.05. Uh, this is a meditation that is in the silence. So if you find you are coming in after the 9.50 mark, if you could just do it silently as to not disturb anybody. Fabulous. And our book of the week this week is The Five Gifts for Abundant Life, and it's available in our bookstore at 20% off. Thank you, 20% off. And now we will move on to our flowers today are so beautiful. Thank you to Deborah and to Shirley. Thank you guys so much. So oh, pretty, I love those colors. Always in the air, can you tell? <laughs> All right, do we have anybody that's joining us here for the first time? If you're here for the first time, raise your hand for us. We have a small gift we'd like to see. Nobody? All repeat offenders, okay. Well, welcome back, I'm glad you're here. All right, if anybody has a cell phone or anything else that makes any noise, if you'll go ahead and put those on silence, that would be great. And please stand and join me as we sing We Are One. Good morning, everyone. I'm Deborah Perdue, and I'm a licensed practitioner here, and it's my joy and honor to be here with you today. Um, let's read the gratitude that is flashing on the screen. <laughs> How glad I am to witness that CSL practice a culture of love, peace, and belonging. It is. So it's only the back one flashing, that's good. <laughs> um, what is a practitioner and what do we do? Um, there's a sheet on the seat back, which is goldenrod. And that explains all about us and also gives you phone numbers if you ever want a quick prayer over the phone or even a session. Call us. And um, 
basically we pray and we also serve the center. Uh, we serve Reverend Steve and all of you and do it in different ways. If you have a prayer request, please fill out the yellow form that can be found on the CPAC, or you can go online at grantspasscsl.org. And when you have an answer to your prayer, which we know you will have, let us know by filling out a blue demonstration form. Um, today, our table practitioner is Janet Murray. Thank you, Janet. She is holding the high watch for our service today, and she can direct you to a practitioner for prayer after the service. And will the practitioners who are available after the service please raise their hand? We've got a lot of us today, <laughs> so use us. We'd love to pray with and for you. Let's read the prayer um, together that's on the screen. I know that CSL is a peace sangha, a spiritual community supporting each other and lifting us all up to be the peace we see in the world. Let's sing I Am Love and you can remain seated as we sing. So glad that the CSL CSL theme is this month is pieces in peace. It gives us the opportunity to affirm our own peace and peace in mind and unity within the one present. It's so appropriate and perfect, especially during this election campaign time, where there appears to be so much division and separation. I am grateful for this time as a community to embrace the peace of God to feel it and share it with each other. I found a reading from the September Science of Mind magazine by Mary Davis, who's doing a wonderful guide. And after I read it, let's go into the silence together and let ourselves be immersed in that piece. And I'll let you know when it's time to come back. It's called Be at Peace. Be at peace then and put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginings. St. Francis de Sales. I now let go of every anxious thought. I now sur surrender any doubt or fear into the great heart of love and earth home. When you reach the bottom of the well and there is no more for you to give, or when stress robs you of your composure, remember that a calm connection is just a moment away. Zoom out for a moment of perspective bringing serenity to your mind and body, welcoming your soul's wisdom. You are made of infinite peace, love, and joy. As we read the gentle meditation below, allow your body to relax completely. Inhale on the words, be at peace, and exhale on the second half of the phrase. Surrender to a moment of soul care and loving kindness float in an ocean of peace and tranquility. Be at peace and release stress, anxiety, and worry. Be at peace, allowing each moment to enter without resistance. Be at peace, shoulders soft, heart open, spine aligned with heaven. Be at peace, and let the world spin without you. Be at peace and breathe, 
just for me. Be at peace in the flow of all attachments to outcome. Be at peace and know that love always lives right here in this moment. Be at peace and open to divine timing. Be at, pe be at peace and know you are never alone. Be at peace and call on divine assistance for any path. Be at peace and listen for guidance. Be at peace and imagine the highest good for all. Be at peace and make an offering of your joy. Be at peace and feel how infinitely loved you are. Affirmation. I am peaceful. I am calm. I am eternal. Divine grace protects me, strengthens me, and guides me. So let's go into a moment of silence together, letting that peace wash over you. I know absolutely that there is only one. There is oneness of God everywhere and in everything. And I know we are all part of that. We are peace. God is peace. We are peace. And so I know that this time together is a blessing at the Grand Pass DSL and that we shine more love and light and peace into this world as we share together. Thank you, God. And so it is. And so it's time for wonderful music by Chip and Bucky and the rest of the people. I think Janice is joining. Oh, Janice isn't, but Reverend Steve is. And then a talk by Rev Steve, or you're not. <laughs> <laughs> heard in a service a wonderful song and phrase once and it, it, it's a beautiful chorus choral piece called requiem and the chorus of it is sing me to heaven and uh, so I use that in this and also the thought that as Saint Anselm said those who sing pray twice Especially for Ned today, for Angie.
sing me into grace. Chip and Bucky, let's hear it again. And that's a song you wrote, huh, Chip? Yes, that's an original. And that can be found on the CD that he gives away in the back of the bookstore. There is a CD back there, I think. He was here for the first time last week or the week before, when he got a race one. <laughs> but there are CDs back there that are free that have some of Chip's music on them. So if you haven't got one, it's time to get one. Well, we have a little bit of um, bookkeeping to take care of before I start my talk today. Uh, we had a class um, that finished and we finally got the certificates for it. And this is for the treatment and meditation class. So I'll ask you to come forward, except, except for Dave, um, because he's he's, He's back there and we don't want to, to have to, you know, bother him to get all the way up here to get up on stage and such. But Dave Shedrick, let's hear it. Yes, come on up. This is our facilitator and um, we can take that back there to him after we give everybody else's out. Okay. <laughs> Wendy Orsett, come on down. Samantha Hall, who is not here, but gets a round of applause anyway. Let's hear it for Samantha. Also, Angelo Amendiliola. You know Angelo? Angela. Yes. But Gary Torresini. Is that correct? Torresani. Come on down. Ha-ha, Torresani. And last but not least, Mr. Bill Cook. 
Come on up. Come on up. You absolutely. And Dave back there. Let's not forget Dave. All right. Thank you all. Uh, can, can we take a picture? Does anybody have a camera? Any, anybody? Nobody, nobody has a camera. You, you would think. Now you're gonna have to get a picture of Dave individually, because he's in the class too. <laughs> sure. Well, let's hear it for our treatment and meditation class. Well, now for my talk. This month, the title is Pieces into Peace. And our talk today is Om Shanti Om, which means peace, peace. You know, when it feels like everything is falling into pieces, you ever feel like that? Like the more you try to pick something up, it turns to sand in your hands. And maybe it's not the time to be picking it up. How can we find more peace in our lives when we are focused? We can see peace, but when we're confused, we see pieces. And it's the illusion of separation that we're seeing when we don't see everything is fitting together properly. And right now is an interesting time that we are being presented with pieces. How can we see the peace within those pieces? You know, spiritual wisdom and tools can help us awaken. And I am so glad that we have this teaching available to us right now. <laughs> I mean, what would you be doing? What would you, what would you be leaning on right now? Yes, you'd be crying. Yes, well, that's, uh, I lean on that too. But it's nice to have a foundation of a spiritual practice that we can lean on that when everything is falling to pieces, that we can find a peace that brings comfort and soothes our soul. That no matter what is going on on the surface, deep down there is a calm, there is a peace. Dr. Ernest Holmes wrote, Peace is always at the center of our own soul. But we don't always look there. We look everywhere else, don't we? I remember when I was in, in practitioner studies and I called my practitioner facilitator, my teacher, and would rant to them about my challenges. And they say, have you prayed about it yet? I say, you know, let me call you back. You know, why is it prayer is the last thing we think of? Well, I guess I'll have to pray. I've tried everything else. When that, when you become a practitioner, that's the first thing you do, is you are practice in the awareness of the presence that is animating everything. Spiritual tools in our toolkit for life help us experience that grand rising in consciousness that we're all experiencing. We are all being called to greater consciousness. And some of us don't want to go. And that's the rub that we feel. That's the disconnect. That's the uncomfortableness that you may be feeling is that you may and parts of you may not want to go yet. You want to hang on to the old ideas, you know, because they kind of serve you. You know, the old story, you know, the old story, you know, all that it's convenient. You know, if I can't have what I want, I can have the, the challenge of not having it. It's called substitutionary fulfillment. But I want to talk a little bit about Sangha. It is a Sanskrit word um, from the Buddhist and yogic philosophies, meaning spiritual community. And that's what we have right here. We have a spiritual community. We know that on every Sunday for the last 52 years, people have gotten together in this room, 
well, in this room for, I think, 48 years, something like that. But a long time, people have been getting together here for spiritual community. There's been a minister and a congregation, a family, that is looking for new ways of solving their challenges in life. And rather than spinning out in the pieces, we found peace right here. This is our Sangha, a place where people come together to support each other, doing spiritual growth work and practicing a culture of love, peace, and belonging. That's what Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living represents. Now, you may think that this is the only one of these little centers, but we're one of many. We are one of over 500 centers in the world. We represent the highest and best, we like to think, in consciousness. We don't mean higher than anyone else, but it is a way. This is a modality of finding yourself. Do you know how many countless millions of people have been through teachings like this and have been so-called saved? You know, saved? You know what saved means in our tradition? It means you had a healing. It means you are no longer suffering from the pieces of your life. You have pulled them in together in one peaceful experience. See, there is a power in coming together as centers for spiritual living. Being a peace sangha, supporting each other, and being the peace that we're seeking in the world. That is the power. Today, we'll learn a little bit about the CSL, Centers for Spiritual Living Peace Sangha, and give a grand rising lift to that consciousness. So I want to take just a second. I want to invite you to think about peace. What does peace mean to you? If you were living in world peace, and I don't mean in the world, I mean in your world, your individual world peace, what does it look like? Breathe into that for just a second and feel the, comfort and the stillness and the divine right action that's moving as that peace. Okay, come on back. Isn't that nice? Okay. That's what we're all about. Dr. Ernest Holmes wrote in his Sermon by the Sea in 1959 at the Asilomar Conference, Find me 1,000 people in the world who know what religious science is and use it and live it as it is. And I'll myself live and see a world and a new heaven right here on a new earth. Again, that was Ernest Holmes, Sermon by the Sea, 1959. Asilomar. I still go to Asilomar every year because there's energy there from from people like Dr. Holmes having those discussions by the sea. You know, Dr. Ernest Holmes also said, it is done unto you as you believe. And this is true for everyone. There's just a lot of people that their as is different than peace. They are buying into conflict and challenge because they're working through, they're in process. You ever been with somebody who's in the midst of a process, trying to figure something out, and they're spinning out? And you kind of want to go, a woe. A woe, woe. Because you don't want to get like in their um, tornado of energy. So how can we calm their tornado? And you really, you can't do anything but hold your peace. When you hold your peace, you demonstrate to them the consciousness of wholeness. 
That's all we can do because they're going to have their process and their tornado may get a little bit bigger. Just don't let it interfere with your calm vortex. There's a difference. A vortex is an energy zone that you have created that is your peacefulness. You have it in your home or in your car or in your workspace. You create it as you put everything in alignment if you're ADD like me. But it is part of our work here as light workers, as the, the angels, if you will, if that's your terminology. We are here to do the business of holding the peace, to model it for those who may be having a tornado experience. And let them have their turbulence because eventually every storm spins out. Doesn't it? It eventually becomes just a little uh, dirt pebble. It's becoming just a little whoosh until it just loses its velocity and falls back into peace. But we need that. We need to kick up the dust sometimes, don't we? For us to believe in and experience peace in the world, we must be ready to be the peace that we believe is possible because peace is possible. By coming together in a spiritual community like this, we model that peace and we amplify our collective peace by coming together. Um, if you get a bunch of people who are spinning out and tornadoing together, you get a grand tornado and a lot of dust. But when you bring people together who are knowing peace and wholeness, it settles that dust and turns that dust into clay where we can mold new lives. Peace in our lives and in our community is not only possible, it's happening. You may look at the news and go, I don't see it happening. But everything is working itself out. It's just spinning out. It's just having a little tornado experience. And you get to turn it off. You don't have to be part of it. If you're going to be part of it, be the peace in it. Don't be the drama. Don't be a DQ. I don't mean Dairy Queen. Don't be a drama queen. Okay, and now it's hard. If you've been addicted to having drama in your life and somebody hits a ball into your court, you want to whack it back, don't you? Ah, oh yeah, well, let me show you how bad it can be. But if you just step aside and let the ball drop, game over. Game over. There's no energy. They will take their energy elsewhere and find a court where they someone will hit the ball back. Don't buy into the drama. Now, this isn't to say that we don't have drama in our lives, but don't accentuate the negative, right? If energy flows where our attention goes and we're paying attention to the challenge, we're holding it in place. Yeah, but you don't know what to do. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Let's do that for a second. Home. For just a split second there, all you could think about was creating a vibration of home. You weren't thinking about your checkbook or the tire that's going low or the laundry or the dishes or my dog or any of that. You were thinking about creating an energy together. Oh, home on the range. There's no little place. There's no place like home. There really isn't. When we quiet our minds and focus our minds with the energy of stillness and that own sensation, 
it creates a new energy form that whatever was challenging you is dropped. It is, it is just Dairy Queen has gone away. Now, I, I love the, the desserts at Dairy Queen. What do they call that? The, the Flurby or the, I don't know what it's called. Blizzard. I love the blizzard. I just don't like being in a blizzard. So oftentimes our minds get very busy holding the drama. Now, again, this isn't to say that we don't put attention where when somebody is doing a wrong thing and say, oh, well, I'm not going to see that. We don't push into that in a way that creates more drama. We must create the peace and listen to what they're saying. There's usually a fear or a misunderstanding behind their well-meaning drama. They have a right to have that drama because that's their process. They need to work that through. They need to, to process that. Just don't become part of their process. Hold the quiet stillness and focus of our minds and harness the energy of the infinite presence that you are. Just by speaking om into the situation, just if you see something going on and you just drive by and go om, watch what happens. Watch what happens. And all of a sudden we'll just like, whoa. It transforms because we are inviting that energy of wholeness into a situation. Peace. Peace, peace be unto you. Doing this in community amplifies our peaceful effect. You know, doing it individually is a good start. And sometimes that's all we can do is hold our own ohm. But when we ohm together, it generates a energy force that transfigures everything unlike it. This is why it's so powerful. There was an American Hindu foundation that did a, a, a experiment. The word Om is um, held by certain people in certain communities. And in those communities, certain things happened where the crime rate went down and people began to get along Things that used to be a problem in the community were shifted because everyone started thinking peace. And I'm inviting us to do that right here. Whatever your drama is, and I'm, I'm not looking to minimize your drama. That's, that's yours. You get to have that. And you should. If it's drama for you, you should work through it because you need to have that little turbulence so it can wind itself down. We're just going to introduce Om in our lives, peace and harmony. Um, the word Om is uh, defined by Hindu scripture as being the original vibration of the universe. And by chanting Om, the mind becomes aligned with the breath, which enables a person to get into an elevated state of consciousness called Samandhi. The activity of attaining Samandhi brings the material absorption of the mind under control, which enables a person to have one pointed focus towards spiritual realization. This is um, from the American Hindu Foundation, um, www.hinduamerica.org. So, what do you need in your life? to bring some ohm to? What, what is the dirt devil that's spinning out in your life? Is it your finances, your health, your relationship, maybe creative self-expression, maybe you have a block there? 
What if it was working out? What if you were getting better? What if your relationships all of a sudden worked perfectly? Wow, that's cool. I'd love to do that. So feel that power of coming together. Amplify that peace. And it starts where you are. You know, if you're in turmoil, be there with it. You know, get into it a little bit. You know, push it through. But don't stay there. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of turmoil, I shall not build a condo. I shall not buy a t-shirt. I shall not get double prints. I shall continue walking. Continue walking. Maybe pick up the pace and jog through it. You know, if you can. Our Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living is a peace portal. Hundreds of thousands of people have come through these doors and had a healing over the years. I mean, how many people have come through here? And, I mean, not hundreds of thousands. I'd like to think that. But how many lives have been touched because of the people in this room? Countless. Countless people have been transformed because of one person's desire to not be a DQ. Think peace. And if you think DQ, get yourself a flurvy or whatever it's called. <laughs> so, you know, in the last three years, we've all been through this transformative experience called COVID. Right? We all shut down and stayed at home and, you know, uh, social distanced. And we went through something that was spiritually transformative because we realized how much we need to be together. We missed it so much. Some of us missed it. <laughs> Some of us enjoyed having social distancing. But we can't live in social distance. We don't live. We deteriorate. A muscle not flex atrophies. We, do, we don't flex our love muscle, our ability to be together. We atrophy. This is why being together on Sunday is so important. This is what it means to even if you can't be here, be on Zoom. We got three people on Zoom right now. You know, I started Zooming before it was popular. I started Zooming before the <coughs> pandemic. And I'm so glad that we had that up and running when it happened because we went right into it. And for two years, I think, we did services on Zoom and we kept this place together. You know, they're saying if you kept your, your spiritual center together during COVID, there's a lot that shut down because they couldn't, they couldn't make their, their payments or bills. But we kept this thing together. You and I. I kept doing services and you kept, yeah, in classes, and you kept coming. God bless you. So in conclusion, Dr. Ernest Holmes said in A Prayer for World Peace, I know that because the divine mind has created us all, we are bound together in one infinite and perfect unity. See, you are me and I am you. There's not us and God. There's us as God. It can be no other way. This is the power of unity and community. This is what that feeling of, I just, I just want to go to church today. I don't even know why. I don't even like those little songs they do in the middle. Make us hold hands. Some people don't. I've come to love that. But something is drawing you back to the love of what you are. You, it's like, why do we love flowers? Why do we love flowers? Because something in us resonates with the beauty of the flower. It is us. It's just like the beauty of water. 
Some of us are water babies. I'm a Neptune alien. So just letting you know. You're all going to look that up. What did he say? My minister is an alien? Well, we're all alien, aren't we? So Dr. Holmes prophesized a new world, a new heaven, and a new earth by spreading the teaching of religious science. This really is our teaching. This is why when you came in here, you went, I did not know there was a church that taught this. This is what I felt all along. I'm at home. That's why this feels so good, because it is good. This is your home. To consciously live the concept of oneness, create a kinder, more connected world in your world. Start with loving yourself. And from loving yourself, it will spill over like a fountain of love into everything that you are. And people will go, I don't know what you're smoking, but I want some. But you don't need to, because you have a pharmacy right inside yourself of love. You don't need anything external. Moderation is the key. Save yourself for the after party. So, may you look into your own heart and find the peace that does not surpass your understanding, that you do understand and can share it with all that you are. So it is. Amen. Namaste. So it is time for us to follow our teaching and go within. So I invite you to take a moment and be the ohm. Let's do an ohm for a minute. One more. of wholeness springs a field of all opportunity and I will meet you there and we will dance and sing and discuss life in a wonderful loving way for there is a new energy being experienced we turn away from what doesn't work not to deny it but not to give it any more power. And we turn into the health, to the wholeness, to the divine right action of our situations. I may not know what you're working with, but I know the divine source energy knows exactly what you're dealing with and exactly the healing modality necessary for your transformation. So we place our consciousness there. Thank you, divine loving wholeness, for transforming our consciousness in such a way that allows us to move through our so-called challenges, releasing any drama that may be catching our attention and moving into the stillness of peace and allow that transformational energy to be the basis for which we live our lives. So we give great thanks. Thank you, divine power and energy of source for this time, this space, and this place that we release and let go, placing these words directly into the living, loving law where it is already transformed, perfect, whole, and complete we affirm it together by saying and so it is amen ah, and now it's time for our operatory ideas about sharing so if you'd like to take your gift and put it on your heart 
or take your hand and put it on your heart if that's what you're giving today. Let's recite this together. As I give my gift in gratitude, I know that I'm giving to a loving, giving source of good. I'm grateful. So it is. And we'll invite some music up. Yeah. This is the offertory song, but you know, music is a participatory thing. So I think if you uh, feel motivated, at least clap your hands or move or sing. You probably know some of this song. You know the whole song. It's a yeah. love train. <laughs> When I was looking for songs, I was absolutely struck by this original song way back when that still had the word, tell all the folks in China and Russia, and tell all the folks in Israel and Egypt. <laughs>
Let's say a prayer for our Arpatory. From the love of pure spiritual energy, these tithes and gifts have been collected. They are evidence of our faith, our belief, and our ability to manifest in this world of form. They do good work in the world. They bless the giver and receiver and allow this, the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living, to be open and available to those who are choosing to remember who they are. For those who may not even know it yet, and for that, this entire community and world is prospered and thrives with love. So it is. Amen. Okay, it's time for our closing song. Oh, wow. We get to teach you another one. <laughs> you may not know this song. In fact, I didn't know it until yesterday when I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> He was so inspired by the topic, though, of well, Om I Shanti. I couldn't find any song that said Om Shanti Om, or and you can sing this song because um, in in uh, Indian uh, and Eastern <laughs> music, there's like it's not an eight note octave; it ranges from eighteen notes to thirteen notes. To, so the actually the good part of this is you can't hit a wrong note. Yeah, just you'll get that good news. And uh, the words are very simple, and it uh, goes like this, and it's just going to drum sort of. So I know you can sing it.
Om Shanti 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 Om. The first two are just the first two is the phrases. Om Shanti Shanti Om Shanti Shanti. Check one, two. It's time for our benediction. So <laughs> please repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening right now. Something wonderful is happening right now. It's happening in my mind. It's happening in my mind. In my body. In my body. And in the body of my affairs. I think it. I think it. I feel it. And I know it just the way that it is and just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Have an awesome week, everybody. Oh.